Okay, in this video we're going to talk about uncertainty in measurement. How do you make correct um, measurements? How do you make sure that you're reading a ruler or a graduated cylinder to the correct um, digit? And then how do we uh, know whether we're accurate or precise? So there is some uncertainty in measurement. So what do we want to do is make sure that we can just measure to the best of our ability and to the most um, best estimated digit. So every um, measurement is going to have one digit that we're going to have to estimate. That's going to be the last digit. So in ca the case here where we look at this graduated cylinder, <coughs> we have to look and see, well, we've got at least 10 milliliters of water. We can see that pretty easily. But then we have to decide how much each one of these graduations is worth. There's five of these marks in between 10 and 15, so that tells us each mark is going to be one milliliter. Okay, so what we have to do then is look at the bottom of the meniscus. So here it says always read liquid levels from the bottom of the meniscus. The mis meniscus is the little curve that we get when liquid goes into a glass container. So we always want to read here from this bottom portion. So what I've done is I drew a little line across here. So we can see that this water level is not quite to the 11. So we know for certain that we have 10 milliliters. It's not 11. So then we have to estimate this last digit. So if you think it's about halfway in between, you'd write 0.5. I think it's a little more than that, so I'm going to write 0.6. And again, it would be milliliters. Okay. So that's what I would write for my um, measurement here. This is my estimated. This is what I know for certain. Okay. We go over here to the second one. Again, it's set up the same way. So we know here we've got 10, 11, and you got to determine, do you think it's above this line of 12? I do think it is. I draw, drew a little line there. So I know for certain I have 12 milliliters. And then I'm going to estimate it's about 0.1 above that line. And again, this is my estimated digit. So you may estimate it a little bit different. If you do, that's your choice. That's fine. That's why it's estimated. Okay, so that's how you would lo look at those graduated cylinders and use those correctly. Okay, here, um, when... The people who made up the PowerPoint did this. They felt like it was right exactly in the middle, so they estimated 0.5. They felt like it was exactly on the line, so they made it 12.0. Again, that just shows you how estimating can be slightly different from one person to another. Now, when we look at the ruler here, um, I'm going to erase this so we can talk through this again, but when you... Um, read a ruler with centimeters. Again, you're going to write down what you know for certain. And so here, these are marked off in centimeters. The little ones are millimeters. So we know that we have four centimeters. You can see that pretty easily where this line is. And then we have to look at our millimeters. We know we have at least one, two millimeters. I don't think it's quite to the third yet. So I'm going to estimate it as, or excuse me, say that we have two milliliters and then estimate our last digit as 0.9. If you feel like it's exactly on the 3, then you would write 4.3. You would know those digits for certain, and then you would estimate that last digit as 0. So estimated digit is here or here. Again, it does not matter, just so you make sure you have that estimated digit at the end. Here I know that I have 3 centimeters, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 millimeters. It's not quite to the ninth yet. So my estimated digit is going to be, I feel like it's about exactly halfway in the middle here, so my estimated digit is going to be the 5. And again, these should be labeled with centimeters. These are all centimeters. So that's how you would use a centimeter ruler that's marked off in millimeters and measure to the correct preciseness. And again, here they pretty much agreed um, with what I said. They felt like it was right in the middle on this bottom one. Okay. So again, you're going to have some uncertainty. You need to make sure, though, you pick the right instrument. If you pick the right instrument, you're going to have more precision and more accuracy. So if you're measuring out only 5 milliliters of something, you don't want to grab a 100 milliliter graduated cylinder. You want to get a 10 or a 25 milliliter graduated cylinder. Because when you're measuring small amounts, like 5 milliliters, and you're off by a milliliter, that's 20% error, which is pretty big. But if you're measuring 100 milliliters and you're off by one, that's only a 1% 1 error. So again, when you have smaller measurements, you're going to have to be more careful with that. Okay, so I mentioned accuracy and precision, so let's talk about that a little bit. When we're gathering data, we typically try to do multiple trials. First reason why is you want to make sure it wasn't just a fluke, that you can get the same answer over and over again. That is precision, getting consistent data. Okay, that's really important to remember that precision is consistent data. 
If you're precise, you are consistent. Okay. Accurate means you're getting the right answer or the accepted. Okay. So if we look down here, our correct value is right here in the middle for all of these. Okay. If we look at it, first example here, all of our measurements are very close to each other. Okay, so we know that this is precise. We're getting the same answer, consistent data over and over again. Here, we're getting consistent data, so we're precise, but we're also getting close to the correct value, so we're going to be both accurate and precise. Here, down at the bottom, we're not really either. We're all over the place, so this is going to be neither. Okay, we don't have anything close or not. So to get a precise measurement, we're getting the same measurement over and over again. The better measuring instrument you have, the better preciseness you can have. Okay, so again, this is what we just went through. Precise because they're all consistent. Precise and accurate because they're consistent and correct. And here is going to be neither. Can you be accurate without being precise? Not really, because you have to be consistent. I guess if you were only taking one measurement and you were on the correct value, then you could be. Okay, But again, when you're supposed to be doing multiple trials, it's pretty hard to be accurate without being precise. Okay, So if you're not consistently correct, you can't be accurate and precise both. So this leads us into experimental error. We've already talked a little bit about percent error when we did our math pretest. Um, we know that um, if we're not consistent, we're going to have error. Okay, it's going to happen. Every measurement has some error in it, no matter what we do, and we can't be perfect. Okay, so what you do is once you are finished with all your measurements, you can figure out how far away you are from this corrected this correct value. And that's what we use our true value minus our measured value over our true value and then we take that and we mult that's going to be in an absolute value bar and then we're going to take that answer times 100% to see how far away we are from the correct value.